Hello, it's me, Recky, together with... Carol. And it's time for another reaction. It is. Yeah. And uh, I completely forgot what we're reacting to. We are going forward uh, with the Halloween stuff. Yes, And yes. we find found a video, top 10 creepiest small town in America. I am so curious yeah, about this. Yeah, poor people that live in this town, if it's like super creepy. I don't know what that means. It all depends on how the creepy is, how they see see the creepy. Is it a lot yeah, of abandoned yeah. buildings? Well, what is creepy, yeah. Yeah, it's like six active serial killers. <laughs> I mean, it all depends. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm curious. And this is from the channel From Here to There. Yeah. You find both links, uh, the channel and the video we're going to watch in the description. Go there and give them the support that they so much deserve. Mm. If you do enjoy content like this, let us know by smacking the like and, of course, hitting that subscribe if you're new to the channel. We would greatly appreciate that. Okay. And if you already did that, thank you and God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much to our enablers, the people who send us a bunch of stuff that we can do. And we're getting addicted to it. <laughs> I really, really do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a big thank you to our channel members and the patrons. Thank you so much for the amazing yeah. support. Thank you. Uh, a shout out to the Supreme Tier donators over by Patreon and, of course, from channel membership. Mm -hmm. You guys rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Personal shout out to the ultimate supporters only available on Patreon. Mm -hmm. DJ Walt, Rona Dwayne, Tammy, Kevin, Dana, Troy, Zara, Robert, Matt, Lake, Tracy, and Lon. You guys are completely guys. insane with that. Thank Please. you so much and God bless. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for all the wonderful comments yeah. you give the love is amazing yeah and um, uh i uh i, I uh, you, uh, we got a great community yeah we have the best and you yeah. are a part of it mm. so thank you so much let's find out the creepiness yeah. of uh, this towns i don't know how why are they creepy though yeah exactly oh i almost clicked the wrong one mm -hmm. you ready yep warning psa stay away from these small towns at all costs Ooh. We've all been to that one rundown town where the vibe just seemed off. The people are strange and there's this weird feeling in the air. There are a lot of creepy towns in America, especially once you get into the more rural areas, but most don't compare to these. You really should avoid going to any of these places unless you absolutely have to. Some have a dark history and are reportedly haunted by ghosts if you believe in that stuff. And if you don't, well, the paranormal honestly would seem like pleasant company compared to the residents of some of these towns. From abandoned <laughs> buildings to cults and drugs to gruesome murders, darkness and oddities loom throughout their streets. The following places really should be avoided at all costs, but if you're a crazy adventurer wanting to ignore my warnings, or just interested in seeing how strange America can be, then be sure to listen to my top 10 creepiest towns in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, Whittier, Alaska. How would Whittier. you feel if your entire city lived, worked, and spent their free time in the same building? What if they never left? Have, well, that's this. life for the 208 residents living in the small port town of Whittier, Alaska. The only way you can escape or enter, if you dare, is by boat or through a single highly regulated one lane tunnel. It closes often and unexpectedly. When it is open, you're only allowed to enter every half hour. Fortunately, you don't need to go through the inconvenience of leaving your building since this single 14-story structure, Bagich Towers, has everything a town could need from a grocery store to a post office to apartments you can call home, all in the same building. You really do never need to leave, and most people don't during the winter. Just imagine the isolation. What's even more unsettling is that although the people have lived this way for generations, this is actually a new building. But the old building they all used to live in is still there too. On a hill, wow. dilapidated, crumbling, and fenced off. Never to be entered. Outside of Begitch Towers, the town just seems barren, abandoned, and creepy. While cruise ships do come through here in the summer, very few visitors make the trek during the winter, when the town stays dark for over 18 hours a day, making Ooh. Whittier feel incredibly lonely and isolated. Wow, wow that was really cool. Wait, I gotta say that, I kinda like that. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone, I'm going to Whittier. <laughs> 
Point Pleasant. Pleasant, Pleasant, West Virginia. Upon arrival, it isn't hard to see why the town's most infamous citizen, the creepy humanoid moth-like figure known as Mothman, called Point Pleasant home. No one knows who or what he was, but his supposed flights over the streets during the 1960s are only a recent occurrence in a town deeply rooted in darkness. It all began on the 10th of October, 1774. The Shawnee tribe bravely fought the new American settlers for the land that they both called home. The Americans barely managed to overcome the tactics of the Shawnee chief Cornstalk. Eventually, Cornstalk, his son, and close friends came to negotiate with the Americans in an effort to avoid future battles. But the Americans Americans captured and executed them all. Just before he died, Cornstalk called upon the Great Spirit to curse the land for 200 years as vengeance for the injustice done to him and his people. Whether you believe in curses or not, two devastating floods ruined the town followed by a destructive fire. Later, Ooh. an airplane carrying the Marshall University football team and their coach oh. tragically crashed. We are Marshall. Uh, yeah, yeah, that movie, We movie. Are Marshall. Wow. That's why I recognize Point Place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Sure as well, killing all 75 people on board. In 1967, the silver bridge which connected the town to Ohio collapsed, killing 46. Ooh. Then in 1978, a freight train derailed and spilled toxic chemicals into the city's water supply. Not to mention the apparent men in black and UFO activity in the area. The town is even cursed by a name it could never live up to. If you visit Point Pleasant today, you'll definitely feel something strange in the air. And it's not just Mothman. The real mystery is, why do people keep living here? <laughs> Number 8, Villisca, Iowa. On the surface, Villisca looks like your normal quiet- I don't know why, but Villisca just tells me that it's, uh, creepy. <laughs> oh, sorry. Omnibus, Omnibus. I, I, Iowa. Ah, oh, Iowa. Small Midwest town, but that only makes everything that I'm about to. Did you say Iowa? Because now I'm I didn't hear Iowa. that. Number eight, Villisca, Iowa. On the surface, Villisca looks like your normal, quiet, small Midwest town, but that yeah. only makes everything that I'm about to tell you even creepier. Over a hundred years ago, the Villisca Axe murders of 1912 traumatized the town, which hasn't recovered since. The murders took place between the evening of June 10th and early morning June 11th, 1912, when eight people were discovered dead at Josiah and Sarah Moore's house. The six members of the Moore family and their two house guests were found bludgeoned. Even the four children had severe head wounds from an axe. Although a lengthy Ooh. investigation yielded several suspects, one of whom was tried twice, the crime remains unsolved. An air wow. of uneasiness envelops the town today, perhaps because its residents never quite felt safe, knowing a ruthless murderer freely roamed their streets. Today, the town is run down, and although tourists can spend the night in the Moore house, I don't know why anyone would want to. One traveler who passed through here accounts, it did feel eerie and I felt unwelcome. Even the flies were more annoying there. Perhaps that's why no civilization settled nearby. Even though there are 1,200 people currently living in the town, the nearest restaurant or grocery store other than their gas station is 15 miles away. Oh wow. Number seven, Centralia, Pennsylvania. Centralia hey. has been on fire for decades. Yes, you heard me right on fire. The blaze began in 1962 with a trash fire in a strip mine beneath the town. That unassuming little flame ignited an eternal hellish blaze that burns underground to this day. And each year, it grows by 75 feet in every direction. The town has Stop been barricaded it. from the outside to prevent people from driving onto the collapsing roads, which are a danger even on foot. Sinkholes constantly and randomly oh. appear, eager to swallow unsuspecting victims. And where there aren't sinkholes, there are random spurts of smoke that can kill you upon inhaling the fumes. This one might sound like something out of a video game or horror movie, and well, that's because it is. The Silent Hill franchise is based on this town, Silent and Hill. it's a tragic story. The population of once 3,000 residents has now decreased to just 10 according to the last U.S. Census. But Did you say 10? What about 10? 10 people that live there? Oh. Are you not paying attention, honey? The yeah. franchise is based on this town, and it's a tragic story. The population of once 3,000 residents has now decreased to just 10 according to the last U.S. So 3,000 people used to live there. 
And now just 10. Centralia, and now there's only 10. What? Census. But nobody knows if those 10 people still live in the death trap today. Of the 400 to 500 buildings that once stood in this flourishing town, only five remain. And I honestly don't know why anyone would want to still live here. I mean, just look at the place. Mm. Number six, wow. Broadhead, Wisconsin. Broadhead is a town haunted by many dark and twisted tales. The first known haunting began after two men brutally murdered a helpless woman whose ghost supposedly now roams the bridge that she died on. And that isn't the only tragedy that darkens the city. A fire claimed the life of a little girl who apparently now haunts the building she burned to death in. As if that isn't bad enough, Broadhead residents have recounted numerous haunting encounters with various ghosts all over the town. Perhaps because of another tragedy that happened at what is now called called Hell's Playground, where children were murdered by a mentally ill man. Many reports of eeriness and even the faint sound of children chanting have been made. And even if you don't believe in ghosts, the town here still feels creepy, perhaps in part due to the old decaying architecture mixed with extremely religious people and lots of meth addiction. Broadhead just isn't a pleasant Ooh. place to go through. Let's not go to Broadhead, because no. that was so far the only place I really don't care about one bit i'm sorry if you live in broadhead mm. but uh i i'm not really for the 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 fanatic religion and uh the, the meth heads <laughs> and no. the, the, the and the decapitated kids in the playground i'm just saying yeah <laughs> just it's, it puts me off ever so slightly oh yeah number five cairo illinois the cairo that's also the uh the, the capital of, uh, of egypt yeah i just want to get that out there this once booming metropolis sits conveniently wow. at the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. The amazing location brought it great economic success in the early 20th century, but eventually also became its demise. The Great Mississippi Flood of 1927 amassed tragedy here, and soon thereafter, many who once called it home eagerly left once rivers were no longer necessary for trade. It quickly became a ghost town. The population wow. has been wow. reduced to a mere 3,000 residents. Those who remain live amongst the corroding ruins of what was once a great city, now overgrown with weeds. What's even worse is that it's a town ruined by its own hate and spite. Many white-owned businesses chose to go out of business instead of integrating during the civil rights movement. And even as recently as 1967, lynchings were held here. It's no wonder Ooh. so many were quick to abandon the town. Crime runs rampant here, and just walking through the streets honestly feels like something out of The Walking Dead. Ooh. Oh. I'm getting okay. scared. Yeah, me It's getting too. worse and worse. Number four, Antelope, Oregon. Ah, uh, Oregon. Drive about 20 minutes outside of any city and you're guaranteed to find some total weirdness. I mean, this thing, the Temple of Oculus Anubis, is just outside of Portland. But out of all Oregon's cultish, creepy, and strange towns, Antelope is by far the creepiest. I mean, the people here live with actual deer on their porches. That's a major weird red flag. But maybe they just <laughs> didn't get the memo since they don't have any modern technology or much communication with the outside world at all. Now, you're probably what? wondering the same thing I was. Why do these people live with deer? Well, in 1981, a mystic guru guy from India known as Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh bought 65,000 acres of land just 18 miles outside Antelope. And let me tell you. Oregon had no idea what was coming. It wasn't long before thousands of his followers had infiltrated the town of Antelope with their cultish ideals and eventually even voted to rename the town after Rajneesh. But taking over Antelope wasn't enough. Members of the cult began poisoning everything from restaurant salad bars to water supplies of nearby towns and even Portland and Salem. They also tried to murder several public officials. A global man had eventually collapsed the cultic commune, but needless to say, the town of Antelope never quite recovered. Covered. It's a ghost town oh, full of the decaying hell? empty what? storefronts. <laughs> Only 49 people remain here as of the last U.S. Census, many resiliently still following their cultic ways, living with their deer. Number three. Okay. But well, why is it called antelope and not the deer? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't that weird? It's not called, we, we, we live with cats, but the town name is dog. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Utah, Colorado City. 
Colorado City, Arizona. The misleading name isn't half as misleading as the beliefs of the fundamentalist Mormon cult gone rogue that lives here. It all started when Warren Jeffs, a leader of the church, convinced followers in this desert town that technology was satanic and everyone outside of their cult was possessed by Satan. So members yeah, of this cult needed true. to keep their bloodlines pure and only marry within the commune. Eventually, Jeffs was arrested for child molestation, but his ideals remain in the town. Though the rest of the world has moved on, Colorado City is stuck in the 1800s. From their traditional clothing to lack of technology and extreme hostility toward visitors and the entire outside world. Although the town is full of houses, they're mostly abandoned by the members of the cult who instead opt to live secretly in large compounds. The only mm. obvious thing about their way of life is that young girls are forced into polyamorous relationships with much older men. But any other practices remain a mystery, and members of the cult make every effort to keep it that way. Number sure. two, okay. Auburn, West Virginia. This is your typical spooky Appalachian small town, of which there are a lot, but Auburn, West Virginia, just might be the creepiest. Located right off of State Route 74, the town of 90 residents like consists that. of a single yeah. street lined with shack-like houses. And the road comes to an abrupt end once it reaches the woods. There's only one way in or out of the town. Why Ooh. or how it got there is a mystery. And the people that live here are even more mysterious. A man on a motorcycle trip through Appalachia accounts how he stumbled across the town which was completely silent and seemingly empty. Not a soul in sight. After coming to the dead end at the edge of town, he was forced to turn around and as he drove back through the town, dozens of people had suddenly materialized on the porches of their shack-like houses. They stood motionless, silently watching him. No. He got out of there fast. Oh, Number shit. one. Skidmore, Missouri. At first glance, you may see Skidmore as just another decaying small town that more and more people are leaving every year. But this town is a lot more depressing than that, especially when you know where it all started. Over 50 years ago, the notorious bully Ken McElroy blackmailed his way into a reign of terror over the town. He literally raped and pillaged the people there, forcing women as young as 12 into polygamous marriage. No one knew how to stand up to him, not even the police, until one what? day someone just shot him in front of the entire town. There was wow. an intense legal investigation, but no one in the town would say a word. The authorities mm. eventually gave up. Skidmore was finally peaceful for a while. But in the year 2000, Wendy Gildenwater was stomped to death by her boyfriend. Some even say she was dragged on the streets hanging from the side of his car until she died. But that wasn't the last of the town's nightmarish troubles. On December 16th, 2004, a pregnant 23-year-old, Bobby Jo Stinnett, was discovered by her mother who told 911 operators that she looked like her stomach exploded. Upon autopsy, they found that the infant was cut out of her womb by another lady who decided she wanted a baby. For a town oh, of just 250 God. residents, there have been an abnormally large amount of gruesome murders and disappearances. That's why Skidmore truly is the creepiest town in America. But seriously, you probably don't want to visit any of the towns on this list. Besides Whittier, Alaska, which is actually quite nice in the summertime. <laughs> it probably is. Yeah. Uh, we, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you here, uh, if you drive in, in, in Sweden out into the uh, the sticks and come to a village, uh, I'm pretty sure you will get the feeling that the, the only thing is that there's definitely not any gruesome murders, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure it could be a community that is very well communionized, yeah. like in like this. And <clears throat> I guess I think that's actually a thing in, in Sweden too. Mm -hmm. Um only thing is in America, it's like six thousand times worse. Yeah, and that's and that is America. You can't do anything. You can't be like ever so slightly crazy in the head. You gotta be completely full blown maniac. <laughs> if you're not, you're not American, and that's why I love American. Mm. Either you're just American, or you're a full blown, complete, bonkers psychomaniac. Mm. That kind of narrows okay. it down. I love this video. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. If you want to check it out, the, the channel is from here to there. And the video we just watched is top 10 creepiest small towns in America. You found both links available in the description. I had a blast. And if you did too. 
hit that like and subscribe if you want to see more. That's there you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, let's wrap it up. I'm Recky. And I'm Carol. You stay safe. There you go. Thank you.